What rule did the Descendants cast only find out about two weeks before filming? What were they forced to do whenever they yawned on set? And what rule followed Dove Cameron even after she broke free from her Disney persona? Hi, I'm Janet. Let's jump straight into it. Singing and Dancing Lessons when you think about the most recent Disney movies, you probably imagine two or more princesses spontaneously breaking into song. The tunes are infectious, and you always remember the words, even if you don't want to. When it comes to singing and dancing, Disney knows what it's doing, which is exactly why they're not afraid to thrust their stars into the world of music. In the case of Disney's Descendants, we mean this quite literally. You might find it interesting to know that the popular movie franchise wasn't originally meant to be a musical. In fact, actress Sophia Carson, or the Evil Queen's daughter Evie, since she auditioned under the impression it was a non-musical movie. She only found out about the changes when her agent called her two weeks before filming began. Luckily for Carson, and for us, she actually grew up singing and dancing. This doesn't mean she wasn't thrown off, though. With two weeks until showtime, the entire cast had to take singing and dancing lessons. Another cast member, the son of Jafar, actor Boo Boo Stewart, actually implied in an interview that he had known about the changes a month in advance and started taking lessons long before his co-stars. Still, with classes underway, things didn't exactly get easier for the cast. Carson, Stewart, and the late Cameron Boyce all said that filmmaker and choreographer Kenny Ortega kept changing the choreography of their opening song, Rotten to the Core. The cast would learn the choreography in the morning, only to be informed later that things were changed. This would go back and forth, changing again and again, and the actors just had to comply. Actor Boo Boo Stewart said that even though they had all learned the dance in the same direction during rehearsals, some of the cast had to incorporate a last-minute change, doing the movements the opposite way. Of course, changes are bound to happen when something doesn't quite work right, and I'm sure the actors know it's something that comes with the job. Besides, the changes clearly only made the movie better. If you like this video so far and want to see more, please be sure to subscribe to The Catcher. Don't forget to press the bell so you don't miss out on any new uploads. Strict filming schedules. If you thought actors just show up on set, say a few lines, and go home, you're wrong. And the Descendants cast know this better than anyone else. Once the actors stepped in front of the camera, they weren't allowed to leave until the director said, that's a wrap. One particular grueling day of work was when they shot the musical number Chillin' Like a Villain, although it wasn't exactly due to the time they spent filming. The scene was hard to finish because they had to film it during a typhoon, basically a hurricane, but it's called differently due to regional differences. According to filmmaker Ortega, it was their last day on location in Vancouver, so it was absolutely critical that they finished shooting regardless of the time or weather. Shooting in a typhoon not only meant that they had to contend with extra background noise, but there was also a safety risk involved too. They had to work hard to keep everyone calm or chillin' as the song suggests they do. Whatever they did must have worked, because watching the scene, you'd never think they were working in a storm. In a behind-the-scenes look at the rehearsal process, actress Dove Cameron told Disney UK, The rehearsal process and song record process, they're insane because they kind of happen simultaneously. It's really physically taxing. But it also gets you in shape for doing the marathon that is a Descendants movie. To deal with these taxing circumstances, the actress also revealed that she and her co-stars actually have a pre-filming ritual that helps them get through it all. They would all form a circle and chant, Boom Shakalaka, thus amping them up. Ortega actually said it was one of Boyce's favorite things to do, so I'm sure the cast will keep the tradition going should there be a Descendants 4. Body Doubles while this rule didn't really apply to the rest of the cast, it did make an impact on the overall filming schedule. As the youngest of all the actors, Cameron Boyce was only 15 when filming the first Descendants movie in 2014. Due to legal reasons, he was obligated as a minor to leave the set earlier than the rest. Of course, as one of the lead actors, he couldn't just not feature in some of the scenes. That is why the team had to hire a body double to fill in for Boyce. Obviously, body doubles aren't uncommon in the film industry, as they allow the production team to utilize the actor's time more efficiently. Seeing as they sometimes shoot until late, I'm sure they're all in favor of a body double or two. I say two because it turns out the Descendants team had to hire more than just one body double in Boyce's mandated absence. According to the actor, they ended up hiring five body doubles throughout the film. He had two picture doubles who covered for him in the scenes he didn't have lines, 
and two doubles who performed his stunts. If you thought Boyce did all his dancing in the film, it might break your heart knowing. He also had a dancing double for when he wasn't there. Even though none of the doubles ever had their faces shown on screen, apparently they all had Boyce's famous freckles. Did you pick up on any of Cameron's doubles in the movie? Yawn Jar One of the most well-known rules on the Descendants set is probably Kenny Ortega's Yawn Jar. What is a yawn jar, you ask? Apparently, any time a member of the cast or crew yawned during filming, they had to put a dollar in the jar. At the end of filming, Ortega would match the amount in the pot, and all the money would go to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. When the jar first gained attention, Ortega admitted that he came up with it when filming High School Musical. They were filming late, and a couple of people started to yawn. We all know how contagious a yawn can be, so I guess it's obvious why the director had to think of something. In an Instagram post, Ortega revealed that he ended up bringing the jar back for the filming of Descendants 3. He captioned the post by saying, Disney has sponsored so many Make-A-Wish children on my sets over the last nine movies. I'm thrilled that the tradition has continued into Descendants 3. Thanks to my loving cast and crew for their yawns. Maybe this will become a regular rule on other Disney sets too. What do you think? Hair color. It's no secret that Disney has rules on how their stars should look. In this case, they have a rule on what their stars can and can't do with their hair. Malfeasance's daughter Mal is most recognizable for her deep purple hair and matching outfit. But did you know the actress is wearing a wig? Because Dove Cameron was filming Disney's Live and Maddie at the same time as the first Descendants movie, she wasn't allowed to dye her hair. Like her co-star, Sophia Carson, Dove had to sit down for over an hour while the stylist prepared her hair for shooting. This part takes close to an hour as well. Um, prepping the hair, wrapping it in the wig, sorry, wrapping it in the wrap, putting the wig on, making sure the wig looks perfect. Evie has a lot of hair accessories and braids that we also have to put on, so it takes about an hour. Considering how long it took to apply their wigs, not to mention how uncomfortable it must be, I guess being able to color their hair would have been so much easier. For Dove, maybe, but not for Sophia, who would have had to bleach her entire head before the blue would actually show. The pair's co-star, Cameron Boyce, actually experienced this firsthand. Instead of wearing a wig like the girls, the stylist thought it might be easier bleaching Boyce's hair for his role as Carlos, the son of Cruella DeVille. Sure, Boyce didn't have to spend hours in a makeup chair before every shoot, but he did have his fair share of issues. Apparently, the bleaching process took six hours in a salon chair, and the upkeep was no walk in the park either. Boyce's famous dark curls was, as can be expected, quite stubborn when it came to keeping them perfectly platinum. Since all the bleaching ended up damaging his hair, the showrunners agreed to have Boyce switch to a wig for the second and third films. Did you notice this? Whether or not you did, I'm sure you noticed Dove Cameron giving her complete makeover shortly after the release of Descendants 3 in 20. 2019. Finally free from Disney's rules, the actress dyed her hair an enchanting lilac color as a farewell tribute to her famous character. Apparently the change marked the start of her solo music career. In 2018 she said, if I start to really dive into music, that would be a more suitable option for a singer than an actress. Might Dove's subtle change hint at Disney's forbidding her from coloring her hair? Wig or not, Dove rocks a bit of purple. Be good. Because Disney widely appeals to children, the studio is very serious about their stars doing the same. It's vital that all their actors portray a squeaky clean image at all times, something that's written as a morality clause into their contracts. For the cast of The Descendants, it's no different. While only Dove Cameron has officially opened up about it, but more on that later, both Dove and Cameron Boyce hinted at this rule in a Descendants 2 press interview. When asked about the pressure that comes with being a Disney star, both actors mostly talked around the subject. There was however a moment in the interview when Dove indirectly admitted to the rule. It's like I could sit around and feel pressure. I mean, first of all, I'm so boring. Like, I, I'm, I don't feel scared. I'm not looking around every corner to be like, am I going to get caught doing something bad? I remember the <laughs> yeah. last time, right? Oh my gosh, I literally, so like, I literally carry been, my yeah. dear diary every day of my life. Dear diary, today, like, I'm so normal. Um, I'm never doing anything bad. Basically, Dove isn't worried about messing up because she's boring. But through saying this, she actually implies that they're not allowed to mess up. Is that confirmation enough for you? Comment down below what you think. Disney chooses who you are. Earlier, I said we'd talk about Dove Cameron opening up about having to act a certain way. So here's the tea. 
at 24 years old. Cameron's been living in the limelight for quite some time now. We first got to know her as the lovable twins, Liv and Maddie, and then as Mal in Descendants. But since departing from Disney, Cameron has opened up about struggling to break away from the person Disney made her to be. All the music I did with Disney, which was a lot, was always through a character, and it was never mine. I would just come in and they'd be like, this is what you're recording today, and then leave you, and that's it. The actress went on to say that the music representing her for a long time had 0% to do with who she was as a person. That's exactly why she postponed her first release when she was virtually done with Disney. That way, her fans would know the music was 100% hers. Cameron says that while she's grateful for her Disney career, it's also a bit of an obstacle when it comes to her fans. When everyone's so used to her putting one thing out, what would they think if she suddenly changes things up? Dove said that she was so used to always understanding what was expected of her with Disney, she struggled when it came to figuring out what she expected of herself. In the end, Cameron seems to have figured things out. And we at The Catcher couldn't be happier. Since breaking free from Disney's reins, the actress has lined up quite a few projects. Aside from acting in the 2018 musical comedy, Dumplin', some of Cameron's upcoming projects include Vengeance, a film about a radio host attempting to solve his girlfriend's murder, and the Apple TV Plus series, Schmigadoon, which follows a couple who discovers a small, behind-the-times town while on a backpacking trip. Curious about more Descendants secrets? Be sure to check out our other videos. Thanks for watching!